Hey guys, welcome to another tutorial about stable diffusion. Today I will show you how to create a 360 degrees VR video with automatic 1111, batch image to image, deform and control net. For post processing I am going to use Final Cut Pro because I am on my Mac, but you can use any video editing software like DaVinci Resolve, Cinema 4D or anything else that's capable of dealing with 360 degree videos. I would recommend you to watch the full video on Vero's music channel. Just click on the info card above. I am going to include chapters into this video so you can skip any part you are not interested in. Now let's go right into it. First of all we need some 360 degrees footage and basically you can use anything you like but I am going to use a high resolution image from Polyhaven as a starting point. We then will create a high quality stable diffusion render of that image and insert stable diffusion animations into that image so the final video gets more interesting. Just download the free EXR file and scale it down to 2K. The final result will have an 8K resolution, but more about that later. Once that's done, let's switch over to Automatic 1111. And if you're not familiar with it, I will leave a link down below how to install it and run it. It's both working on a Mac and a PC. We will also need some extensions, which I will cover later in this video. Now let's move on. Here we are on the web UI of Automatic 11.11 uh, and we change to image to image. Let's insert our 360 footage and create our prompt. Uh, it's very important uh, to use monoscopic 360 VR so the output image will also be 360 degrees equirectangular. Now I'm changing my model to standard Stable Diffusion 1.5. I'm going to use some other models later on. And we change the resolution to 248 by 1024, which is basically the maximum you can get out of um, Automatic 1111. We need a maximum quality, but it won't take too long to render because it's only a single image. Down below you can see the asymmetric tiling extension, which also helps us to keep the final result in a seamless 360 degrees format. I'll leave a link down below where you can get the extension and then you simply can install it via the extensions tab. Then go to install from URL, paste the GitHub link and install. Once that's done, you might need to restart the web UI in order to make it work. So now we are back to image to image, activate the extension, make sure that the tile X is checked and play around with scale, denoising strength and sampling steps and make some test renders until you are happy. I already did this before, so I just hit generate to create the image. It might take a while, but once it's done, you can check if the final result is still seamless with the seamless texture checker link down below. Just drag the image onto the page, move up the scale and see if there are any distortions at the edges. This one seems okay. Now let's upscale the image to 8K. I'm using upscale link down below. It's a free AI upscaler which produces quite good results. It's quite simple, just select the image, the upscaling type, the image format and then hit upscale. Now we have our 8K 360 image and we go over to Final Cut Pro to see how it looks. Let's create a new library and name it Matrix 360 because it's about the Matrix movie. Then create a new project, set the video format to 360 and the resolution to 8K. Projection type 360 monoscopic. Next go to view and open the 360 viewer so we can check how the image looks in 360 mode. 
This is going to be a music video, so I just import the audio track, just to get an idea how long the video should be. And then I import our 8K stable diffusion image and drag it on the timeline. Now go to the info tab and set the 360 projection mode to a rectangular. We now can pan around the scene and see if everything looks good. Now to the important part. For now we only have a still image where we can move around in 360 degrees, but it's still a bit boring. We want to have some movement in our video. So what we want to do next is taking a closer look at our image and identify those parts where we want to have some movement. For example here. We then will create some stable diffusion animations just of that size and place them exactly at the selected location. We will repeat this process several times across the image and what we will finally get is a very stable and consistent overall scene with some interesting movements where we want them. At our stable diffusion web UI we go to the deforum extension and let's also select another model. I think the deliberate checkpoint gives rather good results. I will leave a link down in the description. Now let's set the width and height to the size we want to replace in the image. Also adjust the steps and give it a new batch name. That's the location where the animation will be saved. In the keyframes section we change the animation mode to interpolation which will create a morphing animation between the prompts we will enter next. Let's make the animation 700 frames long and give it a new seed which I have tested before. The seed type should be changed to fixed which means that the same seed will be used throughout the whole animation which gives us a more consistent look. Now let's enter the animation prompts which I've already prepared. So there will be seven interpolations, each a hundred frames long. We will also enter some positive and negative prompts, which will be valid for the whole animation. Now press generate and wait until it's finished. And once it's done, we get our rendered clip. It's 700 images and also a video file, which we will rename to clip one. Now back to Final Cut, let's create a new project. This time not a 360 project, but just a regular 8K one. We will use this project to paste our newly created clips uh, into the animation. And once we are finished, we will export everything into a new video file, which will be equirectangular and re-import this file into our 360 project, where we will create the final 360 degrees animation. So first let's import our 8K uh, equirectangular image and above uh, we paste our newly created video clip. It's only 700 frames long, so we slow down the animation speed to the length of the whole video. Now let's scale it down and position it exactly to the place where we want to have it. Then use the distortion tool for the exact position and angle. Let's also add a vignette mask. And finally set the video quality to optical flow, which will give us a very smooth animation. Now we are done with this clip and just let's repeat the process several times at different parts of the image so we can get a few nice animations which makes the whole video lively and interesting. And once everything is done, we are ready to export the video and we import the video file into our 360 degrees project. So hit export, check if it's an 8K file Hit next and give it a proper name. 
Now after importing the clip into our 360 project, I have added some more effects, changed the color scheme and we are finally done. Last step, let's export the 360 video. Check if it is 8K Acre Rectangular. With Apple ProRes it's quite a big size, so I think we switch over to H264. I think it's still a good quality. Hit next and give it a proper name. Open the exported video file with a regular video player like QuickTime. You will notice that it looks rather strange. You need a special video player like VLC, which is capable of displaying 360 degree videos. But don't worry, everything will be fine once you upload the video to YouTube. This is the video file shown by the VLC player and you can see it's quite a perfect 360 degree video. You can bend around, zoom in and out and when you watch it on your mobile phone or your iPad after uploading it to YouTube you can turn around and you will see that the video is turning accordingly. If your video doesn't behave accordingly you might need to inject the 360 degree metadata otherwise YouTube might not be able to identify that it's 360. If that's the case, you can download a metadata injector which will insert just this information into your video file. I'll leave a link down below. The box My Video is Spherical must be checked. And then everything should work. If you have any questions about it, please don't hesitate asking me. Well, I think that's pretty much all for today. So thank you very much for watching. If you want to see more stable diffusion videos or 3D videos made with Unreal Engine or Blender, please visit Vero's music channel, link down below.